I travel around the country. I've been traveling around for a while. It's been busy. We did have uh, a pretty bad week last week. I will uh, tell you, as much as I can tell you about that, we are making a, and I won't say too much because it's, we're being filmed and it'll be on YouTube, but we are making a formal complaint about the level of policing we experienced last Tuesday um, at the only hostings organised at for the Lewisham East parliamentary by-election, which I stood in and which was held last Thursday. There was an event, for, for those who don't know, an event uh, arranged two days before, and I, I and other candidates were due to speak, a hustings event, and I wasn't able to attend in the end for my own safety. A group of so-called anti-fascists using fascist tactics of bullying and intimidation, blocking doorways, that was the intent, to block the doorway so I couldn't get in. Police were informed of this prior to the event, police were informed that there was going to be protest. And in the end, it was cancelled because I, was, I had left uh, believing the event to, to have been cancelled, but then I saw on social media that it was still going on. I was intending to go back, and at that point, uh, I saw that it, would, it had actually been cancelled. What I take from that is that had I turned up, they would not have been able to control that crowd. There, was, there were assaults after assault, uh, people spat at, people pushed to the ground. I've seen that you can see the, the vicious, the, the venom in this. Uh, there's a lot of hatred there, and that's what worries me. But what I take from it, and we have a, I'm hearing today again, we have a meeting arranged soon for members up in Stoke-on-Trent. And Antifa are apparently making noises on social media about disturbing this one uh, and stopping this one. What they want to do now is something they unfortunately did earlier in, when, in our earliest days, in our first few months of, of a par as a party. We had several meetings we had to cancel because Antifa were getting hold of the venue. We have to employ ridiculous means to meet. We have to only send messages to people of certain postcodes, and even with that, we're taking a risk. We have thousands of signed up supporters who we can't freely communicate with because we know that some of them are Antifa. We are going to now face similar threats, if, certainly if Stoke on Trent happens, if they try to close that down. And if they succeed in doing it, if the police call it off again, they will keep doing it. And you can see on social media that after I didn't turn up on Tuesday night, the police told me not to, uh, you can see on social media there was congratulations. Congratulations from the so-called anti-fascists, these groups like Stand Up to Racism. And of course, they call themselves that because if they protest against you, they are described in the press as she was protested against by Stand Up to Racism. And what does that immediately tell people? If they're standing up to me, I must be a racist. Press coverage, appalling, absolutely appalling. There wasn't, there was none. None of the mainstream media thought it interesting that a candidate in a parliamentary by-election in London couldn't attend a hustings for her own safety and that it was closed down for, for the sake of public safety. A parliamentary hustings, organized by private individuals, closed down. Nobody seems to think this is worth noting. Have we, is this normal now, or is it being deliberately ignored? I'm not sure which one it is. I think it's a little bit of both. It's being ignored because they don't, the mainstream media does not want, it doesn't want people to know about our existence because we may just, they may just go and read. They may just go and find out things the mainstream media doesn't want them to find out, namely that we are not Nazis or fascists or racists. Uh, if people go and investigate these things for themselves, that's the worst thing. That's why they're trying to shut us down. I take a great deal of encouragement from all this. It's very difficult. I now have security, and, and Mark at the back is now my security. This is new. This is, uh, we're in a new dangerous era, and it's not pleasant for me, personally, to know that these people are, they hate me. It's, it's the only way I can put it, they hate me. <laughs> And I think if I had turned up there last Tuesday, I would have been in trouble. I would have been in trouble. The police were not able to control them. 
and you can see you can see how they how they can behave. You can see how whenever there's these big left wing marches, there's property damage. I believe there was some property damaged last week in Lewisham as well. So these are not pleasant people, and it's a personally high price to have this kind of, of hatred. And part of the reason that this that people like myself are singled out, of course, it's because we speak ill of globalist the globalist elite and its plans to bring down the borders and bring cheap labour into the West, meanwhile dismantling Western culture and the power of the individual and essentially aligning this big alignment between what I can only call neo-communism and Islamism, which uh, is destroying our freedoms, which has, is mainstream. This is mainstream. The Labour Party boycotted the Lewisham East hustings on the grounds that they would not share a platform with a fascist. That's me, by the way. I, it's, it's, still, it's still incredible to me that I'm described as a fascist. Everything I say is, is democratic, about democracy. But of course, it's not about whether or not it's true. I'm labelled a fascist to scare people away from listening to me. It's all got the same intent, the stopping me speaking, the actual physical blocking of the doorway, stopping me going into a room. It's all, very, it's all, it's, it's all the same style, it's all the same pattern, it's all aimed at the same thing, it's at the public not hearing me. They don't want the public to hear me. I, as I said, I take great encouragement from that. Because the reason they don't want the public to hear me is not because I'm a hate-mongering, racist, fascist. It's because I'm not. And if the public hear me, they will know that. They don't want me for the globalists and the Islamist elite, this global elite, which they are such establishment. They're so establishment, these goons, aren't they? They think they're edgy, and they're propping up the entire establishment. The mainstream media, the entire uh, parliamentary establishment is all on the same side on this stuff, all globalists, all internationalists. And they think they're edgy, being the, the, the sort of street goons that enforce this, like Hitler's brown shirts while calling everyone else anti-fascist. But, uh, and not, not a great result either, sadly. Of course, we were never going to do great. We were never going to garner a great, to garner a great deal of votes. Some, I've, I've seen some people, and I think it's probably right I respond to this, I've seen some people suggest it was a mistake to stand in Lewisham East. Uh, can I ask what people's, what people's views are on that? Was it a mistake to stand in Lewisham East? I thought it was a very great decision. Personally, I think, why not? <laughs> you know, if you're going to start being scared to stand somewhere, what's the point? Absolutely. It was, I had a personal reason for wanting to stand. I, I thought, with it, three times it's come round to me now, Lucian East, as this is my, I was, I stood in it once, I was deselected from it once, I thought, well, here it comes again, I've got to stand in it. But from the, hi, from the party's perspective, we've got, we get a chance, we get a platform. We get a chance to distrib distribute hundreds and thousands of leaflets. It, we get a chance to tell people we exist. But if you look at the, if you look at the turnout and you look at the, the type of parties that did well, the Tories lost out hugely to the Liberal Democrats, a anti-Brexit party. This is a, the Labour candidate lost a huge majority. I mean, Labour's majority was slashed from 21 to 5,000, um, partly because of a one-third turnout. And it worries me when two-thirds of the electorate doesn't feel bothered to come out. And I said on, on social media after listening to Janet Davies' speech, after she was declared victor, uh, she'd said that she wasn't going to, these are her words, tolerate, she would not tolerate an extreme Brexit. She would not tolerate an extreme Brexit. And I was standing on the stage and I thought to myself, they talk as if there's been no referendum. You hear this a lot among, on all sides of the House of Commons, discussing whether or not we should leave the EU, as if that decision hasn't already been made. This is how the mainstream politicians are speaking. They hold us in absolute contempt. We're a problem to be overcome. You know, the, the, we, are, we are to be strategied away. This is how politicians see us, and, and they get away with it, sadly, because people keep voting for them. People keep voting for them largely because of the media. The media is a toxic poison in all of this. The media will carry known 
proven lies. You can see they won't, they'll step right up. They'll step right up to the edge of the law. You can see them doing it. It's very, very frustrating. But it, they're very, very powerful. They're not as nearly as powerful as they once were. I don't think we'll get back to a stage of it was the sun what won it. Do you remember that, uh, that, that sun headline, it was the sun what won it? And I think there, there was a great, a greater deal of power from the mainstream media at that time. I don't think it exists anymore for several reasons, the internet being the obvious one. And people are finding information from various different places. But sadly, the mainstream media is still extremely powerful. And a lot of people read it, take it in, assume it's true. And there's a, a subliminal uh, activity. They, they, you, you hear far right, you read far right over and over again, associated with that person's name. Very, very difficult for us to fight back against it. And made, of course, obviously all the more difficult by the physical obstruction to actually speaking. Bad week, as I said. Um, but I feel, I, I must say, I feel stronger from it. I f it was it, that level of, I've had protests against me before. I'm used to protests. But I've never had a protest of that size. I've never had a protest where we were in, I, where we felt as if, and we're in the, the level of danger we were in. Well, this is it. This is, a, this is, this is it. And this is where the, the strength that, I'm, that we should take as a party from this is that if we didn't matter, they wouldn't bother. And that we matter precisely, as I said, because they know we're not what they're saying we are. If we were crazy racists, you know, frothing anti-Semites, they wouldn't care about us because they know people won't vote for that. The reason they're silencing us is because they know if people hear us, they will vote for us. This is, I take it as an enormous compliment. And if you're watching Antifa, thank you. Um, incre incredible times. The, the, we, we've experienced, it, it, it's, made a, it's made a huge change, I think, in momentum in the party this, this week that we experienced. It's made a huge change in the determination of the party. And I, certainly in my own determination and, and in people who work with me on the committee. We're going to grow. I believe, I think that the Lewisham result, obviously it would have been nicer to get a few more votes. And of course now the Antifa have the 266, which they keep tweeting at me. Uh, I think, are you not bored with this yet? You, you just let it go. But it's, it, the result was, it would, like I say, it would have been nice to get a bit more, but it's irrelevant. When you see the left wing, the left wing result, the Women's Equality Party won, got several votes. You know, these small left wing parties got several votes. The top five of that of the winners, uh, what's the name of the thing you stand on when you collect a medal? Podium. That's the one. Thank you. The top five on the winners' podium. Only one of them was not left, and and real left, and anti Brexit. And that was the Tories, and you can hardly describe them as being. Um, well, they've brought themselves to the left in order to compete, haven't they? Because the media is so left wing. That powerful media is so left wing. But as I say, coming out of it stronger, lost nobody over Lewisham, membership still growing. And here we are, and here we are in Ipswich. And, and I've got, uh, I'm doing the UK Freedom and Unity March in London on Saturday. Hartlepool on Monday, Stoke-on-Trent on Thursday. I think I'm up in Lincoln there next Saturday. Got uh, Cumbria. I've got Southend on Sea. I've got Sheffield. I've got Norwich. All in the diary for the next couple of months. These are people who are getting in touch with us who want to hold meetings. And we're, we're holding one in Norwich, which has been advertised, and it's, they're now getting a bigger venue. This is, people are interested in what we have to say, and in many ways, this, uh, these Antifa people are doing us a favour. They're getting us attention. People, it, it's, it, it's still, it still impedes us. I'm very much looking on the bright side when I say that this, this attention does us a favour. It does, because some people will look and listen, but probably more people will just take it on board and assume it. So we have to go out there and actively, actively fight our corner. We have to actively take on the press when we can as well. And I think the news shopper, this little local newspaper in Lewisham, which I think, and, and I probably, I should know this really, either on the day of the election or the day before, 
because I think I saw it on the day of the election, they put out a tweet. This is the local, the sort of biggest local newspaper in Lewisham, put out a tweet saying, serial political failure and hate monger, Amory Waters has blocked us on Twitter. Uh, something about there'll be more, more, more likes or something than the number of votes she'll get in Lewisham. This is the local paper tweeting about me on the, on the day of the election. There's got to be some code of practice being broke there. So we're looking into it. We have, we have our complaints ready. So we're going to fight back. We're going to fight back. And we're going to stand our ground. And if they do want to protest against us in Stoke-on-Trent, well, it's their democratic right to do so. And nice distance away from us so that we can go ahead and exercise our democratic rights. I am very optimistic. I'm very excited about the future of the party. I think I, I will say just a couple of words. I will say just a couple of words about the the. This is I'm I'm asked about this all the time, and honestly, I don't like talking about it, but I will because I'm, I'm, there's probably some questions. Probably one or two of you might be asking this question about UKIP. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of talk about unity with UKIP. People ask me, people in UKIP, it, it happened again at Lewisham East. I was asked again by a senior person in UKIP, and this happens every time I see UKIP. Will I come back to the party and bring For Britain with me? My answer is always no, and my answer will remain no, because For Britain is the future. And we can make it the future. We can make it the future. We can't sit and wait. We can make it the future. Because there's a new future coming, and I really believe that. I really believe every, No matter what obstacles we face now, I think what keeps me going through all this, because we hit brick walls everywhere we turn. We can't do basic things. We can't get bank accounts. We can't, no one wants to work with the far right. We even struggle to get, uh, we, we, of course we struggle to vet, get venues, we struggle even to get security, we struggle to get everything because of people so tainted are we. This is the obstacles we face. But I still remain optimistic and keep going because change is coming. I really do think that change is coming. And on that, I don't see why I should drag for Britain backwards to what I mean, I don't say it with any malice, I don't say it with any pleasure, but I do think that UKIP is of the past. I think the public sees it as of the past. I don't think it's got fresh, exciting things, new things to say. I certainly haven't heard any. And I, again, I don't say this as some sort of spite or some sort of, you know, as some sort of attack. It's not. It's, I'm talking about our political situation. I'm talking about UKIP. I, I don't see anything much from it on Brexit. I don't, I certainly don't believe that Gerard Batten is going to be allowed to be leader for much longer. I think the knives are already, as far as I know, the knives are already coming out, complaints about his associations with Tommy Robinson. And if we were to unite with UKIP, remember it was, Sorry to say, but it was UKIP who caused this, this the, the, you know, it, the, the, the accusation of Nazism was, came in this direction and not the other way around. Um, but we would be again embroiled. I spent about th three, four years in UKIP, and the entire time I was embroiled in arguments about what we should and what we shouldn't say about Islam. I heard the same things over and over again. We've got to think about the moderates. Most of the moderates are on our side. Uh, repeatedly, it's about the ideology. It's not about the people. Or we'll talk about this after Brexit. We'll just, whenever Brexit will be, when will that be? When is Brexit going to be? Is it going to be next March? I don't think it is. We'll get something next March. It won't be very substantial, I suspect. It is next March, not next February. March, I think, uh, when we're supposed to be leaving the European Union. Not a chance, not a chance. We certainly won't have border control next year. We certainly won't have much control next year. What we'll have is some, well, we'll step out now, and then it'll take another five years, and then we'll take another step out, and then five years after that, there'll be another step out. And in the meantime, of course, they'll have another referendum and cancel the whole lot. Yeah. This is the plan, this is the plan. 
So, of course, you probably, if you follow our policies, you'll know that uh, we are against the European Union full stop and the European Union has to go. And we need fresh thinking on the European Union. I want us to be looking much further ahead than just this so-called, I've started calling it so-called Brexit. That's how little faith I have, that we're actually going to get what we voted for. There may, there may even be a second referendum, who knows, quite soon. You can see it, you can see it. It, it. The hints are getting stronger. The hints both from the British government and from Europe, they're getting stronger to the second referendum. Why not? As, was it Juncker who said, well, our arms are always open to the UK? I think, I bet, yeah, you, I bet they are. I bet they are. They don't like losing a referendum, the Eurocrats. Yeah, it's not their favorite thing. So they'll do everything to ignore it. So we need to think, to think differently. I want fresh new thinking on the EU. I don't want it to be all about trade deals, which again, of course, are vitally important, but it's all they talk about. You'll get some discussion about sovereignty, but overwhelmingly, the discussion on public debate, on television, on news, is about trade deals. I want us to start talking about the identity of Europe, what kind of society we will be, what kind of, of, what kind of ideologies, what kind of religious beliefs, what kind of strife, inter-tribal, inter-strife are we bringing into this country with this mass immigration? And while the EU is hardly solely responsible for it, it is largely responsible for it. And because, of course, the EU is allowed and able to, and, and Germany, Germany, isn't it odd? Isn't it odd how Angela Merkel unilaterally decided to open Germany's border to the world when she is such a, a strong Eurocrat in every other respect? Isn't it odd? What I'm trying to say is the EU is behind this. This is the EU. The EU opened Germany's border. Germany's the biggest power. It's in the middle of the country. People are going to flood there. This is, all, this is what we need to talk about. This transformation of the Europe that we knew. Our places where we go for holidays for years, we, 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 this is all being dismantled. Look at the Greek islands. These are all being violently attacked. I've seen, I've seen videos of, of people just walking in to people's houses on Greek islands. People, you see messages coming out from local people saying, what is happening to us? Why aren't we talking about this? Why aren't we talking about this destruction of Europe? We must change the conversation about the European Union. And I just don't see that coming. Uh, from, uh, we, need, I, I just, we need a fresh start. We need a fresh start. Do We're doing it. We're doing it. Well, I mean, I think we need to, yeah, but nobody else in Ipswich knows what we're talking about. When we go back to our homes, your neighbours and mine. But, but this is where we start. How can we change that and this take something it. to them, not leafleting because it's expensive and it takes time consuming and you can't leaflet every week like the newspapers can go out every day. We need something to start all rubbing. We need an answer to the media. We don't seem to have anything. What can we do as a branch to inform people? We need to do a variety of things. We do need to leaflet, we do need to do the old fashioned stuff, we do need to do street stalls, we do need to get involved in local campaigns. I would always encourage people to get involved in local campaigns. Go along to local council meetings, learn what's going on in the local area, watch what the local council do, write to local newspapers. Get it. These, these, are, these, are all, these are what we do because they work. And we, I know we face unique obstacles, but we've just got to do what, what we've always done, do the, the, the same stuff, we, we must break through, but we must keep standing in elections as well. This is when we get our official platform. This is when we get media coverage. We wouldn't otherwise give it to us. We must stand for elections, it's absolutely vital. And I would encourage everyone sitting here actually to, 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 consider, to consider standing for public for, for us because I it, it's really it's absolutely key to us it's absolutely key. If you've got a criminal record. I think it depends what for it depends what for not for Parliament wow. but I think you can depending on the length of sentence stand for local government wow. I might be wrong I think that's true I think so um, but yeah we need people to stand we need people to step up but we need to keep it we're really growing 
We were, we were founded last October. I, I have this, I, I think history is made in living rooms. And so I always say that it, it is, it's made a couple of people, it's often made a couple of people make a couple of decisions and something is triggered and, and things change and, you, and that's why a small group of people can, change, can make history. This is what, um, and, and, I, and I really believe that we can, we can do something but people have to get on board, people have to get on board. I think there's something special, I think there's something special in the message, I think the timing is right. And I think our, our middle, of, middle of the road, I hate using the expression middle of the road, but it's certainly better than using centre ground. That fair, common sense middle. Politics has become, this Labour Party particularly, has become so ideologically, so ideologically based, so ideologically fervent, that they've sort of lost base, they've lost touch with normal people. They've lost touch with reality, with the reality of people's lives. And not, not, not much better can be said about the Conservatives. I think there's just this hunger out there for plain speaking, for the truth, for the truth they're not used to hearing, and it'll come as a shock. And it'll come as a shock to a lot of people because we're not used to hearing it. That's why we need to do it. We'll get attention, but we must persevere. That's the, that's the absolute key. We have to persevere. That's it. And you know, Labour, I've, I've said this before, as well, Labour came about and was very successful very quickly because the working class had nobody. And now, to my mind, the working class has nobody, which is another reason I think there's really, there's an opportunity for change. Labour could go. So we can, someone can get rid of Labour. I think they're ripe for it because they've become something bizarre. They've become this uh, Islamist, communist, sp uh, minority cause fascists. They really have, Labour's stamp, was on the leaflet advertising this boycott of Louis Chemise. Labour Party was written on it. The, the, this, is, this is the Labour Party. And Jeremy Corbyn himself agreed. Yeah, well, absolutely, but he's, he's largely what's transformed the Labour Party into this hard left. But he came to Lewisham and agreed with Janet Davey that she shouldn't share a platform with a racist. I mean, this is the leader of the Labour Party telling the country, telling the world that I'm a racist and a fascist and this is, this well, is where we are. Lie, but, you know, like, I can't be throwing these accusations at you. Where's the proof you're a racist? You know? how, how can they, well, you know, you can't just throw things like that, surely? Apparently you can. <laughs> yeah. Apparently you can. I went to see a defamation lawyer once yeah. and I was told that essentially they were subjective words. And therefore, you know, he, he and I dis disagreed, for example, on what was meant by far right. And that was, um, that was, that was my, and, and, and this is, as I said, they skirt, they skirt up to the law. They know they can, they can do this stuff. They know what the law is. I think these big papers have more lawyers than journalists. They know, they know what the law is. And they get away with a hell of a lot. Um, Massive, massive obstacles, but I'm in it for the long haul, and that's another big, op you know, a big thing that I'm, I, that an, an, an additional positive. We're certainly the people who are who sit, who work with me daily are so determined and committed, and I'm certainly, <coughs> certainly in this for the long term. I'm looking at the next two decades rather than the next two years, and I really think, I really think the message is right. It's. I, I think that. Um I think they have managed to intimidate people into not getting out and supporting them visibly because, I mean, just take what's happened to Tommy Robinson, and he's a very public figure. Mm. So for people like us where we don't have a public profile or anything like that, I think for me it worries me because we have a daughter, we have a life that it's hard to put yourself out there when mm. you've got so much to lose. And, you, you seem to have the whole state against you. I think that's, you don't want to be intimidated. We're, we're facing violent threat. It's not, it, we are facing a loss of livelihood as well, but we're also facing, we're facing all kinds of threats and they're real. And the number of people who contact us about fear of losing their jobs, we need to fight that particular aspect very strongly, I think. We have people contacting us, and I've had another one contact us in the last couple of days who has been fired, uh, this one suspended, for saying things on Facebook or Twitter, which they didn't like. It was, uh, this is a teacher. 
So we got involved with uh, our Beverly, our ex-secretary of the party. She was fired from her job for having a For Britain symbol on her Facebook page. And she was taken into a room, uh, and, or summoned to a room, and all of her stuff was already ready for her to, to be escorted from the building like she's some sort of toxin. I mean, this, this, like she said, oh my, this woman is a threat to us all, get her out quick. This is insane. She had a symbol on her Facebook page. This is so important that we take these legal cases. And I, I really want people to come to us, more and more people to come to us. We need to get a case like that into a senior court and get a ruling that bosses cannot sack people for things they've posted on. Unless it's threatening violence, they cannot sack people for a political opinion on Facebook. But I've seen, I've seen documents that employees get. We've had several people come forward with this. So I've read the documents that they get. It's, it's like some sort of emergency. They think some catastrophe is about to take place. You were watching right-wing videos, and we're now worried that you won't be doing your job properly. This one person was a social worker. She will now be, uh, she's now, will she now be racist towards, if she gets a black family, they're worried about, this is insanity, this is insanity. She'll have shared a Tommy Robinson video on Facebook or something, and they think now that she's a threat to children. This is the alarm they drum up, and this is the public sector, and they don't do this accidentally either. This is intimidation. The language they use is not just undiluted intimidation. It's a threat, because this spreads. This, the fear spreads. I think, there's a, I think people who work in the public sector now are probably afraid a lot of the time. A big, a big sea of desks, of people, open plan desks from the public sector office. Can you imagine how afraid of saying the wrong thing people must be? And then when they have their board meetings and discuss these things and they come up with absurd, politically correct wastes of money, Who's, who wants to be the person to put up the hand and say, no, I'm sorry, I don't think we should spend lots of money on that politically correct cause? It's not going to happen. So I completely understand. It's across our society. People are terrified of this. But I, on a practical level, people can do online stuff incognito. And if you really do want to help in this cause, find a way of doing it online. That's, and, and I think there's never enough people to help do this stuff online. But great, a great, one of our most powerful, most potent, most important weapons is the internet. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I'm an old-fashioned girl when it comes to technology. But it's a, a, without it, we would be in a lot more, even more trouble. Our freedoms would be in even a lot more trouble. Can you imagine if we didn't have alternative media? Remember the Cologne attacks? Do you remember how long it took? Do you the next day, they had reported that it had gone off largely peacefully. And then two, three days later, the alternative press started leaking out stories that there'd been about a 1,000 German women sexually assaulted and, and mugged and some raped on Cologne Square. And I know Cologne Square is not that big. I cannot imagine what it must have been like that night. The lawlessness. This is Germany, for crying out loud. <laughs> mayhem on the streets of Germany. They don't even, their buses are never a minute late. How can you have mayhem on the streets of Germany? Shocking. If we didn't have, if we didn't have the internet, we wouldn't, I don't think, have ever found out about Cologne or several other things that are happening across Europe. We, this is it, yeah. Facebook will temporarily, sadly, succeed in uh, sadly succeed in cutting us off from mainstream, but not forever, not forever. People are already setting up new gab is becoming popular because Twitter was throwing people off, and sadly, it probably starts out as a bit of an echo chamber. People who were thrown off Twitter for the same reasons. <laughs> it's usually got something to do with immigration or Islam. Um, and they will all be of the same. So it's, it's not ideal. But it's one of those, we're in it for the long term. And we've just got it. This is a massive, massive problem. We've just got to chip away every little bit we can. Because the alternative is to say, OK, we'll give up. Because it's Marxism. Yeah. Conservatives have got the middle there. And what we are is conservatives, conservative values. And if you look at Islam, 
But real ones, because the Conservatives don't have so Conservative values, so I people don't know what they are. That if you could push, you know, not, not being far right, but just simply having Conservative values, which I think most people are going on. But how could you push it, though? You can't really talk to people except at meetings. A very tiny proportion of the news consuming public. I can write articles, I can do interviews. I did an interview last night with Rebel Media, who gets hundreds of thousands of views. We, we have to do something, and, and we have to take every opportunity we can to speak. We've also got to be optimistic, and we've got to believe we can do it. We will definitely won't achieve anything if we don't think we can. Well, but I, look, this is a, this is a nice sized, and this is this is. But thank you. This is smaller than some places that we would get, um, and this is still a very nice size. And, and I, I've seen Labour meetings with not this many people in it. I've seen UKIP meetings with not this many people in it. They, we're, we're nine months old. Thank you all. I'm really optimistic. That's this is great. This is great. This is fantastic. Over the country, we're not in that respect of that plan. But we say, no, that will change is coming. And it's not. Change is coming. It's not necessarily out of control. Uh, and change will come. Europe change will come here as well. Change will come. Yeah, I think that a lot of people think the same way, but they don't get off their arses. You know, that's the problem. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's hard. It's yeah. and until it smacks them in the face, they won't do anything. Yeah. They won't do nothing until it's too late. Yeah, exactly. We, we mustn't it. be defeatist. We're talking about long term here. We're talking about a future. We're talking about Britain in 50 years' time and what part we can and should play in the Britain of 50 years' time. I think we're in a pivotal time now in determining what Britain will be like in 50 years' time. Now is the time, that's why I say change is coming, there's something, there's some change is coming, something, this is a significant period. We've had 100 years of Labour Tory, Labour Tory, change is coming. You saw it in Scotland, this Labour was wiped out in Scotland. In, in 2015, absolutely wiped out. And I was really surprised by that. No one else was, I was. That was a wipeout of Labour. I think Labour can be wiped out from the north of England as well. And I think, and this is another, to, to, again, I don't mean this with any malice, this is another fault, if you like, with UKIP in not breaking through. I don't think it had the right appeal, the right image to replace Labour in Labour's heartlands. But someone can. And if we get the message right, and we get people on board, we get people on board, I think, why not? We've got to deal with realities. We've got to deal with what is good today and what isn't, and get rid of what isn't. I mean, there are a lot of things that are better today than they were 40 years ago. The, the whole no blacks, no dogs, the, we don't want to. This is not the kind of society that we should be aiming towards. We should be aiming towards a where we are all equal citizens, I want us to have a new UK constitution. I want us to solidify, I want us to build, base it on the Magna Carta to bring the best of old Britain and British identity right to the heart of a new UK constitution, which would guarantee a rights and age-old British liberties in this country, so that transient MPs, whipped by, a, whipped by the media, in fact, are able to, perfectly able, using things like hate speech laws, perfectly able to just remove, to put an end to our freedom of speech. <coughs> I think we should have a UK constitution similar, and I know it's not without its problems, but similar to the US constitution, which something to which all laws are subject to, and those laws will protect our freedom of speech and our ability to hold that government to account, which is what is great about the US constitution which is also, of course, why the US Constitution is under attack from the left. And you can see that coming as well, little chipping away, a bust of George Washington taken out, taken out of a church because in case people found it offensive. Imagine that in America, worrying that people will find George Washington offensive. That's the trajectory. That's the, because they have all the same problems in America. Left-wing bullying on university campuses, left-wing dominance of university campuses. Anyone with a dissenting view, no career, 
Same stuff is happening in America. It's happened here. They have. They are much bigger. They, they're a much. They're a much bigger country, but they're also a. They value liberty a lot more than anyone in Europe does today, and that's why I think America will probably stay America. Certainly, if they get eight years of the current president, and I hope they do, they have a chance. He is already. What's What's great about what Trump is doing. And I know, again, the, there's going to be fallout to this. But what he's doing is enforcing the law. What he's doing is what he's supposed to do. And the, it's, some, it's telling when politicians are condemning each other for doing what they said they would do in their manifesto and for doing what's right for their own people. They are condemning politicians, the rarity. I think I can think of one. Donald Trump, who is actually doing what he said in his manifesto, and he's being condemned globally by bodies which it's none of their business, like the United Nations, for example, which should be disbanded. Another vehicle for globalism and communism and Islamism absolutely should be disbanded. And as Trump stood up, America now is standing up to them as well. This is what we need to see. This is what we need to see, a bit of belief in liberty again. But I, I have hope for America. But you can still see, you can still see the trajectory. Uh, they're chipping away at it. I've heard it, those on the left referring to it as a white man's charter. A white man's charter. That's worrying because that's got the whole, that's got the race card attached to it. Who's going to object to something called a white man's charter? If you object, what are you? You're a racist. Then you get all the bullying. And then eventually you can't attend a hustings for your own safety. This is what they do. So what can I say? It's, it's, it seems the most enormous of tasks, but the only other, we have two options. You either keep pushing, pushing back against them, or you let them win. Sound, like, uh, I don't think I'm going to talk about 50 years or so, big picture. But um, lots of people I speak to, I'm talking about events that could change and get people off the backsides and get them out of the way of the grave. Yeah. To start, you've got to wake them up quickly. I can't see these things happening much quicker than. No, no, I, 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 what I mean is, I, th I think it's going to happen now as well. But I think how Britain will be in 50 years depends on what we do for the next 20. I think it, it could be completely transformed if we don't actively take. Steps to stop it now. Now. It's been almost like where Tommy Robinson was a few years ago. He was battling and battling and battling. Events come along that took over. Yeah. Oh, and that's dear boy. I know, like I said earlier, I don't, we don't want to go down. But events can come along and all of a sudden you're elevated to a level yeah. that, because I know people off the t shirt. People have said to me in the last few days, what is this Tommy Robinson you were talking about that, that a month ago? Um, He's pulled so a lot of people in, thrown a lot of people up, yeah. no doubt about that. And I think that can happen here as well. It will, it yeah. will. If events do change the course of history. Yeah. But it's who is there when the events happen yes, yes. that matters as well. Nice and I want us to be the political party that's there when, when it happens. And we can. And, 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 you know, it, for, Tommy unfortunately can't run for Parliament because of his record. And that's you know, that. that. So we, we have to have a political, we have to have Tommy doing his thing. And we have to have a political, we have to have a political party that's there but, but can reach the working class. And the reason that's so important is because it's the working class who are affected <coughs> most by this. It's the working class who, are, who's, who have lost their neighbourhoods. They've lost the places they grew up. So what's your selling point now? That's the thing. Um, you've got the anti-Islam ticket, you've got, you know, you've got the anti-immigration ticket, but what else have you got? What, what, is, what are the planks that, to, to build on? What are the... What's the draw? You know, what's the unique selling is that, point? Is that not enough? We're the only ones who will talk about Islam openly and honestly and talk about so the Quran that, and we're trying to get into mainstream politics. Well, that's the one who's get, that's getting us attention. That's the one that has people protesting outside. But if they look, they will see that there's common sense all over the place here. And there's a real anti-EU, not just pro-Brexit, but anti-EU, because the whole thing has to go. And as these ne negotiations go on, people are realising it's a farce, and it is a farce. No one wants it to happen. The British government doesn't want it to happen. The EU doesn't want it to happen. We need to talk 
differently about this. We need to start going after this and, and it, this has to, and going after the parties who are anti Brexit and who want to ignore that. What they are saying to the British public, we don't care what you think, we know better. You're too uneducated. We should never have trusted you with this choice in the first place. Just, just go back to watching X Factor and leave us to it. That is what they're saying. And we should be saying, no, no, we want... A but where is this, where's the representation? Where is the people who bother to speak to the working class at all? Labour certainly doesn't because they take the vote for granted. It's time. It's time. It's time to get rid of Labour. Do you have time for more referendums? A couple of referendums on the big subjects every year. I don't know if people would like a couple every year. I think people get a little bit election weary. I think maybe twice a year is too much. It takes energy out of the country. It does. You saw the Scottish referendum. The Scots were talking about it all the time. There was this sort of argument. and It's tense. It's democracy and we must do it. But one of the, one of the aspects of it is it can raise tensions. And it did. So I don't think... A referendum every couple of years. I think there's an appetite for a referendum on some things. And yes, I think, I think actually on this, UKIP had a pretty good idea in saying that if you can get a certain percentage of the electorate to agree to hold a referendum, then you should hold a referendum. But it has to be a high percentage because you can't be holding referendums. For the expense, the expense alone, but you can't be holding referendums every other day. So I think that we could put in place a policy where if you had a certain percentage of the uh, liable, uh, uh, vi viable electorate to agree, then yes, you could hold a referendum. I think that's a, a way of sort of compromise around it, a good way of getting around it. But I do, I believe in democracy on the big issues. I think immigration is the issue, the, the issue. And every party ignores it. Uh, it's, it's, it's incredible. Large majorities, and we see now with the Conservatives again, but large majorities of people have expressed over the years that they want immigration controlled. They're not Nazis or racists. They just want immigration controlled. This is, people do, don't they? Countries have controlled immigration. We've had it in the past. Why is it so unusual now? Why is it so impossible to achieve now? But these are, this is just a, a common... The, the, the most people just think, of course... It's common sense. You can't possibly have countless people coming into your country all the time. How can you plan anything? How can you possibly plan for the next five years? You don't know how many people there are going to be. You don't know how much money you're going to have. Everything is going to become crushed. All your resources will become crushed. This is insane. And all of the, the big parties, the parliamentary parties, are on the same side. Look at Sajid Javid. The Conservatives might talk occasionally tough on immigration, but look at Sajid Javid. Appointed because he was a Muslim. Sorry, I, I, and I, I, don't, I don't see him in that sort of jihadi way at all. But it, this was when, when, when Windrush was happening, and Theresa May was under huge pressure, and she was under pressure, A, to get rid of Amber Rudd. And how else? What a great appointment. Let's put Sajid Javid. I'm sorry to sound cynical, but I do think there was political engineering going on there, political posturing going on there, trying to be PC, because this was such the Guardian was going crazy about Windrush. So, you know, and now look at within hours, within hours of taking office, he reversed the notion that it should be a hostile environment, which was Theresa May's own notion, that it should be a hostile environment for illegal immigrants, meaning it should be difficult to be an illegal immigrant. Right? It's pretty much you, one would expect. The, the clue is in the name, illegal immigrant. Within hours of taking the Home Office, Sajid Javid, the Conservative Home Secretary, said, no, it shouldn't be a hostile environment for, immig for illegal immigrants. And this was said a week or so after the Conservative Foreign Secretary said we should give an amnesty to illegal immigrants. What's the difference between that and Diane Abbott? What's the difference? And I often hear people voting voting Conservative, continuing to vote Conservative because they're afraid of Labour getting in, and I think, well, what difference really does it make? On fundamental matters, what's the difference? You may trust the Tories with Brexit more than you'll trust Labour, which, to be fair, wouldn't be difficult. But how much do you trust the Tories on Brexit? Do, do we believe? And who's going to replace her? Who's going to replace her if she goes? 
It's, 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 it's a mess. We have either, and, and as for the Home Office, we have either Diane Abbott or now Sajid Javid. These are our choices. And this is why I'm telling people, stop voting for them. Stop caring about which one or the other one might get in, because they're the same anyway. They're both going to change the country beyond all recognition. They both don't give a damn about the lives of the people at the bottom of the ladder who are the ones affected by their decisions. They will still be sitting in Parliament, still drinking expensive wines with their journalist friends who print what they want them to print. This is, a, this is the establishment. Labour and Tory are both in it. And it doesn't matter which one of them is in charge at this point. I, I, I see little difference. I see little difference. Labour might bring in a couple of hundred thousand more immigrants in the first year, but ultimately it won't matter because they both, they both, both would happily open the borders. And we can see it. We can see it. Theresa May hasn't said anything about the fact that the Foreign Secretary and the Home Secretary have basically told the world come to Britain. If you come, you can stay. We're going to make it easy. Actually, the new Home Secretary told the world, we're going to make it nice and easy for you now. Should we campaign for proportional representation or first past the post? That's going to be put to the membership. Um, I am kind of okay either way. I'm kind of okay either way. I, people get in touch with me to say, don't, be, don't dread the first past the post so much. Because if you do succeed, then it's a powerful success. And you actually gain power. And you don't enter into this sort of mishmash of people compromising all over the place. And you never really getting what you want. And alliances being inconvenient, alliances being inconvenient for you, alliances having to be drawn up. Actually, first past the post is real power if you win under first past the post. Other people think, we'll never win under first past the post, so we should have proportional representation. On paper, yes, it looks like a good idea, but I think I lean further towards, let's keep first past the post for that reason. I don't know what people think. What do you think? Well, with proportional representation, you at least get a voice. I mean, you know, in the heart of Suffolk, where I'm, I am, it's so conservative, conservative that it doesn't really matter how you vote, you know? Yeah, and... and I guess we've got to change that. We've got to change that. Um, I don't know. I keep going back to Scotland. I keep going back to Scotland. I keep going back to the wipeout of Labour and the fact that it can be done. Yeah. It can. You know, that's what I... That, and, and if you do win, it's a comprehensive win. But I, I guess in the shorter term, proportional... As I say, I don't really... I, I'm, uh, I'm sort of... I, I will, of course, agree with whatever the membership decide, but I'm a bit up and down about I'm a bit up and down about the House of Lords as well. I don't know quite what I know what I want to do with the House of Lords. I don't think I want I certainly don't want another House of Commons, which is what I'm afraid it'll turn into. A lot of career politicians caring about nothing but the vote. There are actually some courageous people in the House of Lords. Um, and a lot and, and some have supported me over the years and I don't and certainly nobody from the House of Commons has ever even thought to say a kind word to me or about me. But I've been invited by Lords to the House of Lords over the years, more than once, to speak about Sharia law, for example, to other members of the House of Lords. The chances of anyone in the Commons doing that is absolutely... So I, there are things about the House of Lords I like, but it's, it's not sustainable for the future, is it? So it's got, to be, it's got to be one of those traditional things that we have to... I'm a bit of a traditionalist when it comes to these things. I just, so I sentimentally, um, but I think it has to go. It's not fit for the 21st century. But I just hope, I just hope that we don't end up with another House of Commons. Unfortunately, we might. Percentage of your um, sort of fans or followers are young. Do you, do you have a, do you have, how's your sort of young no, following? Just, I, yeah, I'm, I'm quite get quite a few young people turning out to meetings, for example. Um, I certainly have young followers on Twitter. Yeah. Yes, I think I do. I think probably more than one would expect. Yeah. Probably more than one would expect. Well, yeah, well, that's... <laughs> and where she goes to school, it's, it's dreadful. Like, you know, she's, really she's the sole sort of voice of reason. She's been called fascist 
I have so friends, many and it's like school, she's really keen. She's very intelligent. She's, well. she's really smart, and she's really keen to get involved in politics. And she she feels like a lone voice in you know a sea of people who are against her. She probably is. You yeah. know, a lot of, but but they, lots of people, lots of young people tell me this. But I often wonder if there are more than are prepared to say, yeah. and they're all feeling that there's nobody else. And I wonder if they don't, if they don't just need leadership and, and someone to go in and give them an opportunity. I would like us to be going into universities yeah. and giving you know, kids an opportunity to, to come and yeah, listen. That's the thing. They never hear any other views whatsoever, just not allowed. That's what worries me. Because I think it's so important as kids are getting older and they're forming their own opinions, they're growing up, they need to hear a, a wealth of opinions, Definitely. make their own mind up, Definitely. then just shutting that down. She's had two years of being taught that she should be shamed. Yeah, she's had English. whole really assemblies that she that she should that we're all immigrants and there's no such thing as, as British culture and no, British values is, a, is like a oh you shouldn't use that phrase and, and, and it's it's horrible. There's so much thing. white hate being pushed out there now, isn't it? Oh, it's global. Who, it's who, global. who do you think that comes from? Is it the Jewish community pushing that out there or? No, I, don't. I think it's the globalists. Yeah. It's to weaken the West. Yeah. We're the ones with the money. We're the ones they want yeah. to bring the cheap labour to. We're the ones that, you know, the, the corporate socialist alliance is crazy. Uh, this, this, they're, they're making slaves. They're making so wage slaves. To yeah. me, right, it's like the politicians are just puppets. There's this entity out there that's controlling everything and they want to Islamify Europe for whatever reason. That's how I see it. And why, why do they want to Islamify Europe? I think there are loads of, there are loads of agendas going on at once. Yeah. Are they using Islam to bring down Europe? There's certainly an element of, of using Islam. I think our governments are using Islam yeah. Yeah. in order to bring in stability. Yeah. Like they're bringing mass immigration in order to bring in stability. Do they think they can control these people? No, but... The, the, the streets won't be safe, so they can have loads of security, and we, of course, will lose all our freedoms. So the, it's, it's, it's convenient. You know, it's not a conspiracy either. Powerful, the powerful seek power. And we can see with the, of wanting to overturn Brexit and this speaking as if Brexit never happened, the contempt they have for our say. So don't think for a moment that most of these mainstream politicians wouldn't happily take your vote away. So you know this is what this is the, the complete disempowerment. The, and it's not a conspiracy. It's it's power. They want power. But there's loads of agendas going on at once. There, our own government's wanting power, defeating our rights, lessening our rights, lessening our ability to challenge them. And yes, there is definitely using Islam Did to bring in stability. Well. Of course, because it's Western. It's Western. Yeah. Everything that's Western yeah. is attacked. And Christianity is the way, is the religion of the West. Yeah. So every institution of the West is attacked, yeah. So definitely. A couple of things. It looks dark. It does look dark. It does look difficult. And especially from last week, when we weren't even allowed to attend our hostings. But you take, there is a massive silver lining in that. They wouldn't bother with us if we, hadn't, if we weren't on to something. And they really are, they really are fierce about us. And they're, you know, they're watching us. They're, they th they've been threatening us from day one because we're onto something. And what we're onto is that we're not what they tell people we are. And that's, we have to keep going. Perseverance is the only thing. It's the only thing. I'm in this for the long haul, but I need help and I need support. And if you can't stand up and be publicly stand up, then privately stand up. Do something, do something, because this is serious. This is serious. It is serious, and it is about what kind of Britain your daughter will grow. I don't want to lose Britain. I don't want to lose the Britain. We had, you know, the, the British sense of humour, the pubs, is our, our, just, just Britain, our Britain. I don't want to lose it. I don't want it to be a tense, dark place where everyone's worried all the time and telling on each other, reporting each other to authorities, that kind of thing. It's, 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 it is here already, but we still, I still think we can remember, well, as long as we can remember that this isn't Britain, this is something someone is trying to, that is just trying to destroy Britain with. Our Britain is still there somewhere. And it, we need to tap into that self-confidence. This is huge. If, if anyone can help 
to get us into universities. Even if you know someone who might know someone who's sympathetic, let us know. I really want to get into universities. When I was speaking for the National Secular Society, I used to do schools. Can you imagine me doing a school now? Katie Hopkins tried to do schools, but they cancelled all but one of them, I believe. I was amazed when we got into Oxford. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they'd have him there now. Again. Perhaps not, no. But what can you do? What can you do but persevere? I really think that even, I think a lot of people think that it's never going to happen in my lifetime. But it is going to happen in a child's lifetime. And if we, and if, actually, if we carry on as we are, it will happen in your it lifetime. Is it is happening in our lifetime. Absolutely. But it's going to get worse, and you will have violent clashes in the street yeah. as the Sharia, as they, they up yeah. the Sharia. And people who are coming here are not coming from places of multi faith tolerance and you know, secular public spaces. They're coming here from where they kill each other over a religious slight. You, we're so naive and stupid to think that you can take people out of countries where 90 odd percent of them support death for blasphemy. And what does that tell you about freedom in that country? You cannot pick up hundreds of thousands of people from what is another century and throw them into the middle of 21st century Europe and think everything's going to go okay. The immigration's not going to stop under either Labour or Tory, so it's only going to get street clashes. People will rise up. People, groups on our side will, violent groups will start hitting back. The worst, and then you'll have tit for tat violence and we'll become a prison state. But the good, the, the, the pro-Britain, the, the pro-democracy will win. It will. The normal people, when I say normal, the people that are not really awake to the threat on the ground, like where I come from, which is a village out of Ipswich, no issues at all. But until that threat actually hits them head on in their own street, in their own neighbourhood. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I agree with that. I think if we had leadership, if we had some political leadership that could talk to the country, and make them understand that even if it's not happening in your area, oh, it's yeah, happening in your yeah. country and you have a duty, A, to the rest of your country, and B, if it's happening in the, in the rest of your country and you don't stop it, it's going to your part of the oh, country yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, it's you know, eventually, it's, isn't it? It's got to. It's I'm, got I'm not disputing that, but it's just how some people are. No, no, and this I is another one of the other things. people, and they sometimes look at me like, I've just got a spaceship. Yeah. And they say, oh, actually, I'm not going to do anything about it. And they think, what are you talking about? And you know, you show them, you show them all the things that are going on, they just don't get it. You've been telling people where you work, haven't you? And they just don't, they just don't listen, do they? No. I think some people are just lost. You can't, you can't even get them. Unless... It's about leaders. It's, it's, about, it's about changing what happens at the top. Because yeah, yeah. if you can change what happens at the top, the media narrative about it will have to change because you'll be growing in power. People will become more confident to speak up. They need a way, someone needs to be forced, if you like, but on a national level. So in a room full of people, someone needs, if someone, if, if lots of people are thinking it, someone is the one to stand up and say, I'll say it. Other people say, okay, I'll say it. And it's, it's not literally like that, but it's, it's a snowball. But what it needs is, is a national first one to say it, to give a bit of confidence, and then it could snowball. But we need to start, this is why standing in elections is so important, because that gives us an official platform. And we need to do it as much and as often as we can. So please, if, if have a think about it. And have a think about setting up a branch. Please do set up a branch. I hope you can have a chat amongst yourselves. We're going to have to finish up here now, because I think we have to be out by nine. Um, but we can go down and have one more drink and a little chat. Um, but I do, I do, don't, don't be pessimistic, don't give up. Don't give up. You have, you have a little, uh, I'm sure, a very beautiful little reason not to give up. Yes, please do. Please do. The thing is, right, when I had her, I should be so happy, and all I'm doing is worrying oh about, God. you know, the world she's oh going to grow God. up in. You know, that's, I'm just worried all the time. Because oh, I, I, don't, I, don't let it spoil I, your time with her, though. Being horrendous. Fight for her. Yeah, don't, don't let it spoil your no, time no, no, with no. her, though. You know, if... Don't, we can, we can fight back, we can fight back, we can fight back.